everyone, I'm Mind, and this is every single LEGO Ninjago Zane minifigure ever made from 2011 to 2023. This is an update to a video I made about three years ago, but of course that video was only up to 2020. So now, three years later, I'm finally going back and taking a look at all these minifigures again, both of the ones that I've already covered and the ones that have released since 2020. This video is of course a part of my Every Ninja Minifigure series, so go check out the playlist in the description if you want to see my other videos, and let me know in the comments which ninja you want to see an updated video on next, because as of right now, all of my videos are outdated, though some more than others. Now, I want to have a disclaimer here that I have in all my Every Ninja videos, and that's that when I say this is every single LEGO Ninjago Zay minifigure, this is every Zay minifigure to have some sort of exclusive part. There's been magazines and books and even sometimes sets that come with minifigures that are just combinations of previous Zane minifigures, so I won't be covering any of those in this video unless they actually have exclusive parts to them. And then I also quickly want to say that if this video gets to 2,000 likes, I'll begin working on the next video in the series. But now, with all that being said, let's take a look at every single LEGO Ninjago Zane minifigure from 2011 to 2023. So we'll start with the very first wave of Ninjago back in 2011, the pilot wave, and there was two different Zane minifigures released this year. Now I did start collecting Ninjago all the way back in 2011 and Zane was my favorite ninja, so these figures are incredibly nostalgic to me. So maybe it's just the nostalgia speaking, but honestly I think these both hold up really well. The original Zane suit of course is on the more simpler side of things because back in 2011 all the designs were more simple, but also this was just meant to be a basic ninja robe, nothing special, but I think it actually does a pretty good job of capturing that. I think the base color of white especially works well for Zane, because the colors on top of that white pop a lot more than the colors in some of the other ninja. Like, I think that metallic gold looks beautiful, and the brown actually fits in really well. And then he, of course, has light gray as a secondary color, which I think is perfectly fine. I feel like it complements the white really well and helps represent the Master of Ice. You can see right here Zane's original face print, and I think this is probably the best of the original 2011 ninja, because it's not like a super expressive face, it's very neutral, while the other ninja had more angry faces, but I feel like this definitely captures Zane's personality from the show. And then, of course, he just uses the classic ninja hood on top. I always love these hood pieces, because as you can see, you can attach a sword out the back. And then one kind of interesting thing about the 20 11 suits is they're one of the few suits not to have any back printing. But yeah, very nostalgic for this figure and I still love it to this day. Maybe a little bit dated, but in my opinion, it's still a very good one. And then Zane DX, Zane's dragon suit, I think is even better. Once again, he's got that metallic gold, but it's a lot more prominent here. And it's of course a giant dragon face and this tail that comes down into his legs. But what I really love on this is that like ice breath shooting out of the dragon's mouth and the blue streak that goes along the dragon too. Again, it just like perfectly captures his element without being like too overbearing. And I think that's just gorgeous. You can see it keeps that white belt, but now it's moved over to one side. And of course, still the same face print underneath, and it's going to be that way for a while. I'll let you know when that changes. Now, this suit does actually have a back torso print. You can see it says the name Zane right there, and he's got his original symbol there, that wolf, which was also on the front of his original suit. I think 2011 was a great start for Zane figures. And oops, I almost forgot this guy, but there's actually one more Zane figure back in 2011, and that was, of course, the microfigure Zane. Now, this guy came in a LEGO game set, and as you can see, it's just a smaller version of Zane, and obviously, it's based off his original 2011 suit, but everything's downscaled. But I think this is just a super cute little collectible to have. Now, I believe all the microfigure ninja did use the same exact print, which is a little bit disappointing. It would have been cool if he actually had a small version of Zane's symbol there, but it's not a huge deal that he doesn't have it, and I still think he looks good. Now, coming to 2012 and Season 1, here are the three Zane minifigures released this year. We have Kendo Zane, Zane ZX, and NRG Zane. Kendo Zane is not one of my favorites. All the original 2012 Kendo suits are not that great. I do like the idea behind it, and I thought they were super cool in the show, but the colors were just never the best, in my opinion. The gunmetal gray is just really ugly, and it just goes on top of their original 2011 suits. There's nothing, like, new or special about this figure. Here. Additionally, there's nothing that makes this explicitly Zayn, right? He doesn't have like a white wrap around the back. This is the exact same Kendo armor that all the other ninja use. So yeah, it was cool to have like a training suit option for the ninja, but I think I say this in all my every minifigure videos, these are just not the best. They do an updated version for the Ninjago movie, which you'll see in a little bit, and I think that one is significantly better. However, Zane ZX is another one that I'm super nostalgic for because of course it appeared in the first season of the show, and I was still very much a kid when these seasons came out, so I have a lot of fun memories of playing with this figure. But I have to say, at least in my opinion, this is another one that holds up pretty well. I think gold and white just in general is a great color combination. Whenever Zane uses gold, it looks fantastic. Or I guess I shouldn't say whenever, because we'll get to that later in this video. But most of the time that Zane wears gold, it looks fantastic. But yeah, this was the first introduction of these new shoulder pads, and I think they look fantastic. And of course, they match the golden weapons that they carry really well. However, that brown from his original robes carries over here in these, like, straps around his stomach. And then he's got a little bit of tan here, too, which that's a color that Zane doesn't really use all too often. So somehow, 12 years later, that still helps the suit feel distinct and unique. After so many years, you'd think the suits would blend together. But no, this one's still definitely stands out, and that is a very good thing. Removing his armor, you can see he still has his original symbol off the back, which it's cool to see that carried over. But yeah, this is still probably one of my favorite Zane minifigures to this day. I really love this one. And I know it's been all praise so far, and I'm gonna be honest, I do like most Zane suits, so it's gonna be a lot of praise for most
most of this video, but there will be some I'm critical of later on. But yeah, NRG Zane is another one of my favorites. I mean, come on, how could you not love this figure? I remember getting this guy back in 2012 and just being so blown away by it. Because the other NRG Ninja, while they're cool, still just use the Ninja's main color. But Zane, instead of making the NRG figure white, they made it entirely like this light blue color. Bright light blue, I believe, is the official name for that color. But even beyond that, the printing on this thing is gorgeous. They use all this metallic silver on the torso to be like these ice shards shooting out. And you can see that continues up into the mask and even onto the face print. And you can see the face print's inspired by Zane's original face. But now he's got like this silver ice shard mask around his eyes and his mouth is white. And I'm not positive about this, but I think even that blue printing is metallic too. He's just such a gorgeous figure all around. And this is another one that we like never got another version like this. He's just got like these ice shards shooting on his back too. My one criticism with this figure is I really wish he came with an armor piece just like Zane ZX because of course Energy Zane in the show still had his armor. Like if we got that armor in this blue color, that would have been fantastic. But luckily you could customize it and put silver on him and that still looks pretty good. So yeah, Kendo Zane is nothing special, but he's fine for what he wants to be. But these two I both genuinely still love. And then coming to 2013 and season two, we only had one Zane minifigure released this year. And this technically isn't even a correct figure because in the show, this is how the figure looks. So I customized it to look like that. But in the sets, he actually doesn't include his armor piece, which in my opinion is pretty lame because the armor piece makes the suit look significantly better. This isn't bad by any means, but I mean, he had the armor in the show and it's very easy to customize. So I don't know why he didn't come out of the set just like that. But anyway, yeah, the Komodo suits were the first suits where the ninja used black as their main color and then their original colors as their secondary color. And once again, white being Zane's main color really lends itself to suits like this because black and white just in general is a fantastic color combination. And I think the gold complements all of this so perfectly. You can see there's an introduction of a new symbol right here and that's going to go on to be used on many of his future suits. But yeah, the level of detail here is incredible. I like these little buckles coming out around the sides. These like knee wraps help make the legs feel extra detailed because if you compare that to the previous legs in 2012, they didn't have this much detail on them. A lot of the printing ended higher up. But then of course he still maintained that same ZX armor and hood. Not new parts, which is unfortunate. However, I do feel like they work for this suit. And then taking the armor back off, there's the look of the full back torso print where you can see he's got his original symbol back there and it's in like the circle. And I think that's really beautiful too. So this is yet another very beautiful figure. Now this won't be the only time we see Zane use both black and white. And I'm not sure which of the black and white Zane suits I like the best, though we'll talk about that more as we get later in the video. But for the very first one, I think it's incredible. But now moving on to 2014 and season three Ninjago rebooted, here are the three Zane minifigures that released that wave. We have Techno Zane, Battle Damage Techno Zane, and Stone Armor Zane. The Techno suits are some of my least favorite Ninjago suits of all time, and that's not because they're necessarily badly designed, but it's because they don't have any leg printing at all. These are the only main ninja suits to not include that, and that's just really disappointing to see, because it makes these feel a lot less detailed than the standard ninja suit. Still though, I have to say, I do like the design of this torso, the metallic silver looks perfect, and I really like this crackling blue energy coming out the one corner of the chest. Because it represents like two things, it could be like an icy crackle to represent Zane's element, but it could also represent Zane's heart, which is obviously a big part of Rebooted if you've seen the season, and that's about where Zane's heart's actually placed, so you could imagine it as that kind of energy instead. This was also the first introduction of the half masks as well as Zane's hairpiece, and this hairpiece had come in other sets and other themes before, but this was the first time it was coming in a Ninjago set. And I actually do like the back torso print on him with more of that metallic silver, but I especially love how his original symbol's still there, but it's like this icy version of it. Now coming to Battle Damage Techno Zane, this figure is actually really cool. I actually had the wrong figure up here accidentally, oops. But this is the correct Battle Damage Techno Zane. And this figure was so cool because it was the first of its kind. We'd never gotten like an exclusive variant for one of the ninja before. Like nowadays we get stuff like this all the time, but back in 2014 and earlier, every ninja had exactly one version of every suit, and there wasn't one-off variants like this. So that made this figure feel extra special, and I have to say it is super cool. So I was actually wrong about Zane's heart, it's actually on the other side, but you can see it's got a similar blue energy coming out of it. And yeah, his chest has been torn open here, you can see his circuitry. And he has one metallic silver arm, and you can see that continues around the back where he's got part of his robe torn up. The rest of the back of the torso though is pretty identical to the original Techno Zane, but the difference in the front is just such a cool variation. But then the other really cool part about this figure is of course the face print, because while normal Techno Zane still uses the original face from 2011, Battle Damage Techno Zane has an all new face print where half of his face has been ripped off. That looks incredible, and it's something I always wanted as a kid because of course that did also happen to Zane back in season 1 in 2012, and I always wanted to make a custom of Zane with his face torn off, but it's super cool that Rebooted finally gave us that after so many years. Level of detail on that face is great too, tons of metallic printing and so many different colors used. It looks exactly how it's supposed to. And there's even some printing around the back which is a nice touch. And then finally Stone Armor Zane I think is alright, I think he's about on the same level as Techno Zane, well I do like the idea behind his torso, but I don't know, there's just something missing for me. And that thing missing is definitely the leg print, I think leg print definitely would've helped here. But even without it, I don't think it's the best suit. I do like the metallic printing in the Return of the Kimono symbol right there, and the blue rippling up from underneath is a cool touch. But I don't know, it just kind of feels like a very boring figure to me. The back torso prints may be a little bit cooler with the original symbol right there and just more of that blue effect. But yeah, I don't know, I just don't have a ton to say about this one, it's just very grayscale, which I get is kind of the point. But back when it came out, I wasn't super passionate about it, and now that we've gotten so many other Zane suits since then, I just can't really say all too much about this one. It's fine, but nothing much more than that. So yeah, 2014 was a weird year for 
figures. The lack of leg printing definitely holds all of these back, but I am happy that we got the battle damage Zane, because that is a very awesome variant. So now coming to 2015 and Tournament of Elements, there was one Zane minifigure released this wave. Now there is a second Tournament of Elements Zane, but that came out later, so I'll be covering that a little bit later in the video. But this is of course our very first ever Titanium Zane figure, and when this figure came out, I was immediately in love with it. It was just so different from any other ninja suit that we had gotten previously. Because Zane has entirely ditched the white here, I mean there is a little bit of white in the printing, but the suit itself is gray and silver. And even still to this day, we never got another suit just like this one. The Hands of Time suit is a little bit similar, but even that has more white on it than this. But yeah, this was very different for the time, and I absolutely love it. I do like how he has his original symbol here in gold, and his chest is printed in metallic silver underneath. But I will say, the one thing that I feel like doesn't hold up the best about this figure is the gray that they use for the body and the legs. Because comparing this to the Hands of Time figure, which we'll take a closer look at in a moment, that figure uses actually silver for the torso and the legs. And in the show, this is meant to be Titanium Zane. He's completely silver. But on this figure, they only use silver for the arms, the armor, and the mask. So while there is quite a bit of silver printing, such as on that chest and on the belt, I feel like the figure would have looked extra special if the legs and torso themselves were also silver. It's not the biggest deal in the world, but just would have been nice to see. However, this figure still manages to look quite good despite that. And I think this ZX armor here was a fantastic choice. Removing the armor, you can see there's like the back torso print, there's more of that metallic silver printing. And you can see also Zane's heart is sort of back here now. I don't know if that's exactly meant to be his heart, because obviously his heart's meant to be in his chest. And I do like how there's a small splash of color there with the blue. And then finally, of course, this figure introduced an all-new face print for Zane. He's got like this blue visor over his eyes, and I think when the mask is on especially, that looks incredible. Because this figure is obviously very monochrome, having that blue right there makes those eyes really pop, but also does a good job to help set him apart from the other ninja. And then of course, this was also the first Zane figure to have an alternate face, and you could see it's this happy smiling face with this metallic faceplate. This I also think is really good because it matches his personality in the show, and the blue eyes are super vibrant there, which I really miss on modern Zane figures. So yeah, I would have liked a metallic silver torso and legs, but it's not a huge deal that he doesn't have him here. Even still, this is a gorgeous minifigure that stands out in my collection to this day. Next, also in 2015, we had Season 5 Possession, and there was a total of two Zane minifigures released to that wave. We have Deep Stone Zane, and we have Air Jitsu Zane. Deep Stone Zane is, of course, another black and white suit, and I used to say that I like this more than the kimono suit, and I think I still do, but I have come to appreciate the kimono suit a lot more. But man, this figure is still spectacular. The biggest difference between this and the kimono suit is obviously that there's no gold here at all. You can see he does have a bit of metallic silver for his chest at the top of his torso, as well as these buckles up here, as well as on the end of the belt. But I think what really solidifies the suit for me is, like, these blue knives that he has tucked into his belt. Because because that of course matches the blue visor of Zane's face. But with that being the only splash of color and everything else being so monochrome, it just looks gorgeous. I really love the new mask piece that was introduced here too, it's dual molded in both black and white. And then of course he still uses the ZX armor though now in black. And there's like the back torso print on that too. So I think without the streaks of blue I wouldn't feel so passionate about this figure, but that plus the visor actually make this guy look incredible. And just yet another one of my favorite Zane minifigures. Then we get to our Jitsu Zane, and I think he's alright. This is another sort of like powered up version of Zane similar to NRG Zane which we just looked at. And that's the biggest thing with this, is it just kind of feels like a worse version of NRG Zane. I do like the actual printing on his torso and legs, you can see his guy's Komodo symbol in the middle and like this metallic silver ice just bursting out of it. Like that does look really good. My biggest issue I think is just the colors behind it. The solid black just really doesn't work for me, as well as the solid white arms, I kinda just wish they did more of that. I get the point of the solid black for the torsos to match the deep stone robes, but without like actual printing of the robes underneath that and just being like the elemental energy, it kinda feels like he's meant to be made of ice right now, similar to like the NRG suit, but ice and solid black just really don't match in my opinion. So if this exact same printing was on top of like light blue or something or even actually white, I might actually like this figure a bit more, but yeah, I can't help but feel like it leaves a little bit to be desired. Another thing that I'm not the biggest fan of is the mask piece, they just use the ZX mask but without any printing on it. Again, comparing that to the energy suit, they did have a little bit of printing up there and that added so much, but without any printing it just feels very plain to me. However, one thing I do like is the face print on this figure, it's just super unique. I love how the faceplate keeps that like metallic silver but there's like this blue outline around it now and the eyes themselves are blue, and there's a great expression to it too. So yeah, I wouldn't call this a bad figure by any means, but but it definitely feels like a downgrade on the energy suit. Next, moving on to 2016 and Season 6 Ninjago Skybound, here are the two minifigures released that wave. We, of course, have Skybound Zane, the main minifigure for the wave, and then here is Tournament Zane, which is, of course, based off Tournament of Elements, like I mentioned earlier, but he came in an exclusive minifigure pack in 2016. Starting with Skybound Zane, though, this is yet again another black and white suit, but Skybound Zane's actually a bit more unique than some of the others, because all the other ninja reuse the leg print from their Deepstone robes, so the only new parts were actually the armor and their torso. And while Zane does still reuse the same mask piece, of course, he actually did get a new leg print here. It is similar to the one on his deep stone robes, so you can see they removed those knives from his belt, and also those silver tips on the end of his belt have now been replaced by gold. And yeah, of course, as you can see, this figure does use gold, similar to the kimono suit, but they still keep that blue like on the deep stone suit, and that's actually metallic blue, which is such a pretty color that Lego doesn't use all too often. And I feel like I'm saying this a lot in this video, but Skybound Zane is genuinely one of my favorite Zane minifigures of all time. The Skybound suits is some of my favorite, but just the angles to everything on the torso printing is so sleek, and I love the new armor piece with the single shoulder pad and the two katana holders 
out the back. And once again, I love how the blow in the torso ties in with the blow in the face. And turning him around, taking off his armor piece, there's how the back torso print looks. You can see it's like this wing design to represent Air Jitsu. And he's got his kimono symbol in the center right there. Just a spectacular minifigure. And the tournament Zane is fine. He is pretty good. It is cool to get him because, of course, this version never appeared in the show because Zane never had the suit in the show. So I am glad that we did get a non canon version of this figure. However, personally, I wish they did things a little bit differently. They kind of did a battle damage tournament Zane where you can see his robes torn open and they're showing his chest again. Kind of similar to what they did with Rebooted. And once again, he's only got half of his face, though this time it's a slightly different print where it actually wraps around the side. Now that is very cool because that's something that we get very rarely. Like, Lego never does wrap around printing like that. So that does help this figure feel extra premium. And the metallic silver for his belt helps this guy stand out. They very easily could have done like Ray or something. However, personally, I kind of wish he had a normal tournament suit just to match the rest of the ninja. Because while this is a cool alternate option to have, I would have preferred just a normal tournament Zane. Still, though, he's got his original symbol at the back there, which does look nice. And you saw he came with the unprinted ZX mask, just like the Arjitsu suit, which again, a little bit disappointing because that doesn't match the other tournament suits. But that's very easy to customize to match the others if you want. So I don't know about this one. Like, I'm happy it exists, but I feel like I'd be more passionate about it if the rebooted Battle Damage Zane didn't also exist. Because a lot of it just feels like a rehash of that figure, which is fine, but I feel like that figure does the battle damage aspect a lot better. So I kind of would have preferred if this was just a regular tournament Zane. Still, though, I guess if you missed the rebooted sets, this was a nice alternate way to get a similar face print. But yeah, I don't know. It's just a very weird one. Now, in 2016, we actually got two separate Skybound waves. So here are the Zane figures that were in the second Skybound wave. We have Prison Zane and we have Echo Zane. I know Echo Zane technically isn't Zane, but he has Zane in the name and he's close enough, so I thought I might as well include him in this video, because I'm sure that if I didn't, people would be complaining in the comments. But anyway, Prison Zane's another super cool exclusive, because this version only appeared in one episode of Skybound, but it's just such a fun variant to get, and I wish we got these kind of things more often in LEGO. Now, this figure was the first introduction of Zane's titanium hairpiece, which was one that we were all waiting for. It was tough being a Zane fan back in 2015. You had to use the blonde hairpiece on the titanium suit, and it looked terrible, but it was the only option we had. But anyway, yeah, titanium Zane just uses the standard Zane face, and unprinted legs, but his torso has a prison outfit on, and his chest has been torn open and it's showing his heart. Obviously, that's a reference to what the mechanic did to him back in Season 6, and I guess they really wanted to include a lot of battle damage Zanes this year. But yeah, obviously, in terms of detail and everything, this is not, like, an incredible figure, but it's a really fun variant, and one that I'm very happy exists. A great one to have in my collection. And then Echo Zane has got to be another one of the best. The level of detail in this figure is incredible. First off, the color that they used for him is medium nougat, and that color is really only ever used for, like, skin tones. So seeing it used in this context is very different, but I think it looks incredible. But yeah, look how detailed that torso is. This very, like, clockwork design, these little gears, the clock in the center. There's metallic gold and metallic bronze. And I love the sort of messy, rusty printing on both the legs as well as the face print. The face print's adorable, too. It looks like Zane while feeling more mechanical. And then the back torso print has Dr. Julian's symbol on it, and he's got a port in the back of his head as well as more rust. The only part I don't love about this figure is the hairpiece, because you can see it's just Zane's hairpiece, but it's in gold. And I really wish the hairpiece matched the rest of his body, because that would have been accurate to the show. But the gold hairpiece already existed. It didn't already exist in Nougat. So I get why they didn't do it, but it would have made this figure feel extra special. Still, though, when Skybound first aired, I never expected to get this figure, so I'm very happy we do have him. And he's another one that has a very special place in my collection. Also, in 2016, we had Day of the Departed, which included one Zane minifigure, Day of the Departed Zane. And at the time, these figures were super cool, because as you can see, this is a throwback to both the 2011 and 2012 suits, pulling over elements from each. So, of course, he's got his original symbol right there, but then there's like those brown bits in the corner from his 2012 suit. And then the belt's kind of an all new design, it goes over to one side like the DX suit, but that's actually metallic silver now. Now, I really want to like this figure, because it's very nostalgic to me. However, my biggest issue with this is just all of the silver. This was a weird time for Zane suits because they were trying to reincorporate the titanium aspect, which I do like, but I feel like it doesn't work for every suit, and this is definitely one of them. All of the Day of the Party Ninja suits had a secondary color for the ninja, for example, Kai had red and dark red, and for Zane, of course, it's white and silver, and I kind of wish they'd chosen a different color instead of silver, maybe light gray or even light blue, because I think that would have done a better job of representing the Ice Ninja and calling back to the 2011 and 2012 suits. The silver to me just feels like there's way too much going on, and I'm not the biggest fan of it, especially on the hood, like in my opinion, that really doesn't work. The armor too, Zane got silver and he's the only one that got silver, the rest of the ninja got brown. But ideally, I think gold would have looked even better because that would have called back to his 2012 suit. So if I were to redesign this figure, I'd swap the armor out for gold, swap the arms out for white, and then change the mask to be dull molded in white and like light gray or something. I think that would have looked significantly better. I do like how there's a printed scabbard around the back, that's a fun touch. But man, I really want to love this figure and I just have a hard time doing so. Lots of cool elements and ideas, but I feel like it just really falls short. Now coming to 2017, in the hands of time, here's the one and only Zane minifigure release this wave. And you saw me talk about it a little bit earlier, but I absolutely love this figure. Now, when the Hands of Time sets came out, I actually didn't really like these suits at all. The printing is very different from ninja suits, and honestly, they feel a little bit more like they're samurai suits. But now, as time's gone on, I've come to really appreciate these figures, because, I mean, just look how gorgeous this is. The level of detail here is incredible, and honestly, I don't know if it's ever been matched. And as you heard me mention earlier, I love the use of the silver as the base color with the white printing on top of it. This is what the titanium suit should have been, in my opinion. And you can see the white on top of the silver pops so much more than the white did on top of the light gray. There's still a bit of gold here, too, with Zane's original symbol. And 
he's got like a little screen on his chest too which reincorporates that blue now one thing i don't love about this figure is the new face print now that is something that's very easy to fix but zing did for some reason get a new face print in these sets where you can see squinting a little bit smiling and the top of his head is cracked he also does not have an alternate face here rather he just has a port out the back and it is cool to have another option for him but my biggest issue is they got rid of the visor and i think the visor makes the suit look a lot better the silver mask with the silver head has never really worked in my opinion another thing that i don't love about this suit is the black armor and arms that works on suits like Deepstone because the entire suit is black but they don't really use that black too prominently anywhere else in the suit so it feels like such a juxtaposition between the torso print and the arm design so i think maybe silver armor and silver arms could have looked better or honestly anything that isn't black because the black is just so striking it just really feels out of place to me there's like the back torso print and once again super detailed i love how mechanical everything is zane just has wiring all over him so while this isn't personally one of my favorite zane suits i have to acknowledge it's probably one of the best zane suits we've ever gotten and i would love to see more figures like this in the future now also in 2017 was of course the lego ninjaga movie and this is where zane was redesigned so there was a total of three different zane minifigures in the movie wave we of course just have zane standard movie ninja suit the unmasked ninja suit and then we also have casual zane now i normally don't count masked and unmasked figures as two separate versions but they are actually two different figures in this case because there's an entirely different face print between the two but we'll get to that in a moment starting with the actual ninja suit itself i think it's fine i honestly don't love this suit i see what they're going for it's like very geometric all the lines very rigid and exact i guess they give off the sort of robotic feel because of course zane is a robot but compared to all those figures that we just looked at yeah this really doesn't do it for me the colors are also just super boring too they don't use any like blue or anything it does have the word ice written in jargon right there which that's a fun touch and he has metallics over walkie talkie but that really doesn't do enough in my opinion they should have included more color there i do like the snowflake symbol on his mask though that's cute and then turn around to the back you can see he's got that symbol that Wu often uses so yeah i'm just kind of at a loss for words as to like what to say about this like it's a fine basic ninja suit but compared to most of what came before and what came after i don't know i don't love this one now of course this is where the figures were redesigned and you can see there's an all new face print here however this face print is pretty bad and it's not for the reasons you might think i know a lot of people don't like these face prints because the expressions are really exaggerated and they don't really match zane from the show and i mean i get that criticism and that's true but i actually don't mind these two face prints i just have an issue with this one and that's because of the eyes look at the eyes on this figure versus this figure they're so much less vibrant on this version of zane and this version of zane also does have an alternate face where he's got a smiling face which is very similar to the face on casual zane however both of those expressions just have these really dull eyes and i think that just looks looks horrible. I don't know why they weren't printed as vibrantly as the other two, but I just don't like that at all. The unmasked thing though, I actually do like this face print. He's got a very robotic expression, but of course he's supposed to. And he actually does have wraparound printing around his head of like this fade coming from his hair downwards. Speaking of his hair, that is an all new hairpiece, which is similar to his previous hairpiece, just a little bit shorter. And I actually think this is a major improvement. It just has so much more personality than his original design. So yeah, I like this version. And then casual Zane is funny. Again, this is one that I feel like fits the movie really well, the show not so much. Obviously that face print does not match show Zane at all, but I do like that sweater design with like the little aliens on it the backpack is a fun accessory and he actually has no printing around the back which is a little bit disappointing but i guess he doesn't need it because the backpack's covering it so while i think that all the lego ninjaga movie minifigures are pretty good i feel like zane's probably got some of the weaker ones however there is still definitely some stuff to like here and i almost forgot to include this guy as a part of the movie section but here is the movie version of kendo zane and this technically isn't an official figure but there is an official version of kendo kai so this is a custom kendo zane that matches the official kendo kai so at least personally to me i consider this an official figure anyway of course it's just the movie outfit underneath and the movie face but then he's got black kendo armor and this kendo mask and you can see the difference between this kendo suit and the previous kendo suit is this kendo suit is actually made for zane and to me that really makes the difference this looks so much better than the original kendo suit and i also think black's a much better color than dark bluish gray so yeah nothing too exciting but another cool variant to have but now we get to 2018 and season 8 sons of garmadon and here are the first two zane minifigures released in that wave we of course have the standard sog zane and then we also have snake jaguar now to me sog zane feels like movie zane done right it's a similar thing where the design's like very geometric lots of sharp angles definitely gives off a robotic feel but it doesn't feel basic like the movie suit did he's got tons of these little triangles all over his suit which just had so much detail those black lines are now metallic silver instead and there's also a streak of blue which looks so nice the word ice is still written there in jargon but this is the perfect amount of color in my opinion this fixes all of my issues with the movie suit and actually becomes one of my favorite zane suits ever he continues to use the movie mask though now there's a black band around it and again i feel like that adds so much it just breaks up the monotony of all the white all over the place and taking a look at the back torso print you can see it's the same symbol as the movie figure though now it's a metallic silver which i think looks significantly better and he's got an all new face print for this figure which has like a port at the back of it just like the hands of time figure and taking a look at the front of his face i'm pretty mixed on this one i don't think the expression's bad by any means i don't think it fits show zane the best but it's also not awful however my issue with it is again those eyes those eyes are incredibly dull and it's such a downgrade from the previous titanium zane because yeah take a look at the difference in color between those eyes and unfortunately we're still stuck with this zane face print to this day or i guess dragons rising finally gave us a new one though i'm not sure if that was just for that wave or it's going to be permanent going forward but even still i think that one still has 
the same issue with the eyes. And it's just a shame because the bright blue eyes look fantastic, but these are just so dull and so disappointing. But yeah, that's my only real criticism with this figure. Aside from that, this is one of my favorites ever. And then we have Snake Jaguar, who's another really unique figure. Zang gets all these like really cool one-off variants that none of the other ninja get. But yeah, of course, this is the Sons of Garmadon disguise that Zane wears to get into the SOG base. And it's just such a cool and unique look. But I love that like neon biker jacket that he has with the magenta and the blue. And the ninjargon on it actually says the word neon, which is pretty funny. He has metallic silver legs, I guess, as a hint to his true identity. And then, of course, removing the armor piece, there's the SOG logo around the back. This figure also has an armored face print, which is pretty surprising. It's a yellow angry face for Zane, and it's in his new design. But you can see it's not the same one from the movie. You can see it's a slightly different expression that matches this one a little bit more. And he doesn't have that, like, faded hair coming down the back. Instead, he just has nothing at all. In my opinion, this is the very best yellow Zane face that there is. And I actually bought multiples of this face to give to my other yellow Zane figures to fix them. No, I think this face would have been fine if they had stuck with it. But this right here is a very appreciated change. So, yup, Zane minifigures are back. These two are both fantastic. I am very happy with them. Okay, and Zane minifigures are no longer back, because here are the next two, also part of the Sons of Garbanana wave. We have Spinjitzu Master Zane and Training Suit Zane. Spinjitzu Master Zane is one of my least favorite minifigures of all time. This thing is so ugly. Not as ugly as some of the other Spinjitzu Master suits, but this is, in my opinion, the worst suit line ever. And Zane here is not great. The torso print isn't the worst. Like, I do like the ice shards all over it. I feel like black is the base color, kind of similarly to the Air Jitsu suit, doesn't work the best. But I do like how he has an actual outfit on here, and the ice is sort of engulfing it. However, that torso print's about the only good I could give this figure. The legs are just reused to the Black Wuku training suit, and you can see they're entirely gold, and there's no gold anywhere else on this figure. And then the mask and face print are just reused from the movie suit, and that just feels way too white for how black the rest of the suit is. Each individual part of the suit might be okay on its own, but they really just don't mesh together at all. It just feels like random parts jumbled together, and I can't believe LEGO was trying to charge $10 for these. The back torso print, again, I think it looks alright. I actually might like it even more than the front. That symbol with the ice circling it is actually very pretty. But yeah, it just feels like nothing else matches about this suit. So overall, it's a disappointment. And then we have the white Wuku training Zane. And I don't have too much to say about him because this is just a suit that all the ninja have. It's cool to get generic training suits for all the ninja, but I really don't have too much to say about this one. I like the Wu logo at the back. That's fun. And it was another way to get the Snake Jaguar head, but that's about all I got to say on this one. But now also in 2018, we had Season 9 Ninjago Hunted and there was two Zane minifigures released this wave. We have Hunted Zane and we have Dragon Master Zane. Hunted Zane's another one that just blows me away. It is a variant on the SOG suit and the SOG suit's already fantastic, so of course this is going to look good as well. But once again, this has to be one of the most detailed ninja suits of all time. I love the entire aesthetic though because it's meant to be the SOG suit but like torn up, scrapped together. So now Zane has one metallic arm, these like straps coming down. You can see like his knee pad arm has been busted up, but he still has like that little triangle design, that blue streak. And now the bottom of his half mask is black, which I feel like complements the top of the mask really well. Back of the torso again similar though, just with armor placed on top of it. Just a gorgeous minifigure all around. This one also has shoe printing, which SOG Zane did not have. The designers did amazing with this one. And then we have Dragon Master Zane, who I feel like I've been too critical of in the past, because this guy came in a gimmick set, and normally gimmick sets are $10, as you guys know, when like LEGO releases spinners, they're always $10, or I guess nowadays 11 But back in 2018, they decided, no, nah, the Dragon Masters are gonna be $15. So I kinda had a thing against these figures, because all of them used the exact same leg piece, and then they also just reused the SOG hood, mask, and faces, and the only new part was the torso print, so I was like, you're really gonna charge me $15 for a lot of reused parts? However, now that some time has passed, even though I still don't think these guys are worth $15, I can now appreciate them a little bit more as just standalone figures. And Dragon Master Zane, I think, is fairly alright. The torso is a very similar design to his, like, SOG suit, but it's made to look a little bit more like an aviator outfit. I like how the blue streaks are still there and there's a bit of metallic silver. I feel like the pockets of the torso maybe feel a little bit flat, but that's not a huge deal. And then the black for the legs, I think, is just alright. It works better for, like, Dragon Master Cold than Dragon Master Zane, but it doesn't feel entirely out of place here. But yeah, then the mask and face prints, which you've already seen. And then he has the Dragon Hunter's logo around the back, and that's a metallic silver. And that does look quite good. So Hunted Zane, yet another one of the best. And then Dragon Master Zane, not the best, but also not as bad as I made him out to be in the past. Now coming to 2019 and Ninjago Legacy slash Season 10 March of the Oni, here are the two Zane minifigures released on that wave. Or I guess this one was technically later, but it's basically the same figure as this one. So I'm going to review them both at once, but technically this guy didn't come out until 2020. So the Legacy suits are probably one of my least favorite suit lines ever, and I think Zane's Legacy suit's alright, but not the best. Again, I feel like it's maybe just a little bit too monochrome for me. I do like the Golden Dragon, but it feels out of place. There's really not any gold anywhere else. It does continue around the back, and there is a blue symbol back here, which I do like. However, I wish there was a bit more blue at the top. Now, Zane does have blue in his undershirt right here, and that is nice to see, but a lot of times that's covered up. And I'm very mixed on gray as the secondary color for the hood. I think it looks better than the silver that they were using for, like, Day of the Departed, but I think the blue that they used later on for, like, Core definitely pops a lot more. So yeah, I just feel like I don't have a ton to say about this one. Like, it's fine. Definitely nostalgic to Legacy and also the end of Masters of Spujitsu, but I can't say it's one of my favorites. And then the updated version just adds an armor piece, and I mean, I guess that's fine. It adds some more gold to the suit, which I guess fits Zane, but in my opinion, it just doesn't really work with the suit the best.
chest. The suit wasn't designed to have armor on it, so as such, it doesn't really feel like it fits. And then if you're curious, here's things swapped around, the yellow head with the armor and the titanium head with no armor. I actually think the titanium head with no armor is the best way to display this figure, and I think the gold armor looks a little bit better with the yellow head, but even still, that doesn't change my overall opinion on these suits. And then of course, also in 2019, we had Season 11, Secrets of the Forbidden Spinjitsu, and there was a total of four different Zane minifigures released in that wave, so here are the first two. We of course just have the standard Season 11 Zane, and then we also have the Ice Emperor. Season 11 Zane is fine, I think this is one of those cases where I feel like the suit looks a lot better in the show than it does on the actual figure, and I feel like that's probably in large part due to the dull printing on the eyes. Because in the show, the blue of the belt and the hands and everything do match the blue of the eyes, and it sort of helps tie it all together, but with how dull those eyes are, that's really not the case with this figure at all. I do think that leg print looks fantastic, that blue belt really pops, and this was also the first Zane suit not to use yellow, black, or white hands, so the blue hands do look really nice, but I feel like the actual torso print itself is just very monochrome. It kind of reminds me of the movie torso a little bit, I do think I prefer this to the movie torso, but it's a similar thing where it's just like very angular and there's not enough colors used. I think they probably should have brought some of that blue into that torso here. And we still have the ground the mask just like the Legacy suit, and I guess that's fine, but again, it's just not my favorite. I wish they had chosen another color for that. The new armor piece though I do think looks good with the gunmetal gray, and there's a look at the back torso print which is very similar to the front. So yeah, this is a fine suit I guess, but considering we just got SOG the year before, it definitely feels like a downgrade. And then we have the Ice Emperor, who is of course a super cool minifigure. I love the dual molding on both the armor and the helmet with the translate blue and the white that looks incredible and perfectly represents the element of ice. And I think it's so cool the way the ice shards like burst out of the armor right there. Removing the armor though, the actual torso print also looks really good. I like how there's actually printed ice shards with metallic silver printing to give it a bit of a shine. And then the actual samurai armor definitely helps this guy feel very powerful. The face print's interesting being trans blue. I'm not sure if that's the best. I think silver would have looked better to match Zane. However, of course, they didn't want the sets to spoil the show, so I understand why they didn't do that. I also think a physical samurai mouth guard like he had in the show would have looked better than this printed one that he has in the sets. But that would have required more new parts, so again, I understand why that's not there. So yeah, this guy's a fantastic figure, and this one is fine, but all things considered, not one of my favorites. And then here are the next two figures of the same Season 11 wave, and these are both meant to represent basically the same thing. This is FS Zane and Spijitsu Slam Zane, and they're both meant to be Zane doing Forbidden Spijitsu. FS Zane is literally the same as Standard Season 11 Zane, except he doesn't have an armor piece and you can see his hood's different, where it's like erupting in this elemental energy. Now I do think that all new hood piece looks fantastic, I love that part, and these colors go together really well, the trans blue on top of the white, but that's really all there is to this figure. I don't know why he doesn't come with the armor piece, because the armor piece does still fit with this hood, so it's a little lame that that's not there, but this hood is a really great part to get. And then Spijitsu Slam Zane is more unique, but honestly I think it's a worse figure, it's just kinda ugly. This is another like powered up elemental version of Zane. He's engulfed in like this silver energy, which like looks fine I guess, but that's not really ice in any way. And it somehow made the torso even more generic. The only colors used on it are silver, this light blue, and then this light gray. So the actual outfit that's supposed to be underneath everything is just one solid color. They got rid of like the black lines and everything, so that just makes it feel a little bit unfinished. And also, I just don't really get the silver energy, like what, what is that supposed to be? That's not ice, like there's a little bit of blue, but there should be way more blue there. And then the silver arms match what they're going for, I guess, but I think the white arms in the previous figure look a lot better. And then this hood is cool, it's nice to get another color combination, with the silver in the trans blue instead of the white in the trans blue, but I think it just looks significantly worse. The trans blue and the silver does not pop nearly as much as the trans blue and the white. Now the one really good thing about this figure I will say is the face print, because this is actually an all new dual sided face. The one side is just an angry Zane with these ice shards erupting around it, and that's a fantastic face print. Still one of my favorites on Zane to this day. And then the alternate side's a happy titanium Zane face, which up to this point we had not gotten in the redesign, so that was definitely very nice to get in this figure. So yeah, I don't know what to say about these two. I think this guy with this face probably looks the best, but I just really wish the torso on this one looked better. But now moving on to 2020 and Prime Empire, here are the two Zane minifigures released in that wave. We have Avatar Zane, also known as Pink Zane, and then this technically isn't a Prime Empire minifigure, it's technically a Legacy minifigure, but then it's also technically a rebooted minifigure, so I don't know, I'm just including it here. It came out in early 2020, but this is golden rebooted Zane. Starting with Pink Zane though, this was a figure that was highly requested for years. Pink Zane of course appeared in the very first season of Ninjago back in 2012, and I remember as a kid wanting this figure so badly, and I am so happy that it was finally introduced with Prime Empire. You can see the outfit's very similar to his original 2011 outfit because it's literally meant to be that suit dyed pink, however if I bring that figure in here you can see there's some slight differences. The printing on the belt's a little bit thicker on the new version, also comes up a little bit higher on the torso, but then the biggest difference is that symbol in the center. They don't actually use Zane's original symbol, they actually use the updated Day of the Departed version. That's a little bit disappointing to see because I think the original version definitely looks better and obviously would have matched the show a little bit better, but you know what, I'm so happy that we got Pink Zane, I can't even complain about that. He did unfortunately still come with the yellow movie head, but luckily that was very easy to replace with just one of the original heads if you still had it, and I do think this looks significantly better. But then a difference between the two that I actually like is the new version actually has back torso printing with ropes wrapping around the back, because that's how the ninja appeared in the show, but as we saw earlier in this video, the 2011 suits did not have back torso printing. Printing. So I think that was a fantastic change. So yeah, not a perfect version of this figure, but pretty darn close to it, and I'm just really happy.
happy that he exists. And then I guess sticking with the theme of recolored versions of older suits, here we have Golden and Rebooted Zane, and this is of course a golden version of the Rebooted suit that appeared back in 2013. Once again, there are some slight differences, you can see the shape of that buckle is a little bit different, the energy erupted around the symbol is a bit different too, and there's even a slight difference between the shaping of everything up here, but you know what, they're pretty darn close to each other, that doesn't really bother me. What does bother me though is that hood piece, because you can see this is just the legacy hood button gold. And while that's a fine piece to get, that's not how it was in the show, in the show he did have a golden half mask, so I'm not sure why that wasn't included here. Definitely would have been nice to get when I made this figure feel extra special, but I suppose this guy is fine the way he is. The back torso print between the two is actually significantly more different, with a rebooted version having his original symbol right here, while the golden version has his kimono symbol instead. So yeah, while I wish this figure was better and closer to the show, again, I think it's close enough. I don't like it nearly as much as I like Pink Zane, but it is cool that we got both of these recolors in the same wave. That's a little bit strange that we got them both at the same time, but I am happy they're here. And then also in 2020, we had Season 13, Master of the Mountain, and here is the one and only Zane minifigure that was released as a part of that wave. And this is actually where my last every Zane minifigure video ended. I remember that opinions were very mixed on this figure when it came out, and it's definitely a very weird one. I think as time's gone on, I don't really like it, but it's close to being good, it's just not there. I think the biggest thing is the blue and the belt, the blue and the gold just don't mesh. I like white and gold, I like blue and white, but this much gold with that little bit of blue on the legs, it just doesn't connect in my opinion. I do like the hood and armor that Zane has, it matches all the other Master Mountain Ninja making them look like knights, but it is genuinely a very unique and fun design. And taking that off, you can see his back torso print, and I think this actually incorporates the blue a lot better, because the gold's not too overbearing here, but it is still there, and the blue is featured more prominently here. So I don't think this is one of Zane's best figures, but I mean, hey, at least it's unique, right? But now we are in uncharted territory, so here's the three minifigures that were released in 2021 as a part of Ninjago Legacy. We have Versus Zane, Legacy Deep Stone Zane, or Legacy 3 Zane, whatever you want to call it, and then of course 10th Anniversary Golden Zane. Versus Zane is a very weird figure, but also a really unique one, and I kind of love it for that. He's got this interesting look where he's sleeveless with these metallic silver arms, but then he also has metallic silver legs, so it kind of makes it look like he's not wearing pants, which is a little bit funny, but he does have like a belt at the top, so I guess you could see these as more robotic pants. But yeah, the torso design's super cool, he's got like printed abs and it says the word Versus up here. I also like the few touches of blue on him, and I think these blue hands actually go great with like the blue half mask. Turning him around, there's a look at the back torso print, again it says Versus. I like how the top half's white, but the bottom half's silver. This almost feels like it's meant to be an Iron Man ask mech suit. But of course, no, this is just Zane's body with an outfit. But yeah, there really isn't any other Zane figure like this one. Next, here's what I previously called Legacy 3 Zane, and the reason I called it Legacy 3 is because obviously the original Legacy suits are the first Legacy suits, the ones that were used in March of the Oni. What I used to call the Legacy 2 suits were the ones that were based off Rebooted and Tournament of Elements, and then this suit is clearly based off both Possession and Skybound. However, Zane was the only ever ninja to ever get this suit, which is weird that we never got it for the rest of the ninja, so I don't know if calling it Legacy 3 is technically correct anymore. But regardless, it's a really cool concept because as you just saw, Deepstone and Skybound is some of my favorite suits ever. However, I have to admit, while I like this suit, I kind of think it's worse than the previous two. On the Skybound suit, I love how vibrant the blue tornado is in the corner, and on the Deepstone suit, I love how it's mostly monochrome, but then it has those little bits of blue. And this is closer to Deepstone than Skybound, but it has like the gold tips that Skybound has, and it has more blue on it, similarly to Skybound. However, the blue's not nearly as vibrant here as it was on that suit. So as such, I do kind of feel like it's a downgrade. It is still a really good looking suit, and maybe I'd like it a bit more if we had it for all the ninja. But comparing it to the two suits that it's based on, I don't know, something's amazing missing for me. The other thing is the armor piece. I don't think Gunmetal Grey looks the best. I think it should have been solid gold or solid black. Solid gold would have been easy to do and that piece does exist in that color, but solid black would have made this feel extra special. And then this version of Zane has an all new symbol on his back, which I think is meant to be a callback to his original symbol, but now it's like a saber toothed tiger and I believe his original symbol was meant to be like a wolf, right? So that does maybe feel a little bit off to me. So yeah, I don't know. I was really excited about this figure when it first came out, but now it's kind of weird that it's the only one of its kind. So I'm happy that it exists, but I just wish there was maybe a little bit more to it. And then finally we have 10th anniversary Golden Zane who of course released as a part of Ninjago's 10th anniversary back in 2021. And this was a super cool suit line, and there's a lot I like about this figure, and then a little bit that I don't. Starting with what I do like, that torso print is fantastic. That white is so vibrant, and the streak of blue like really ties it all together. I also love how he has the metallic silver chest too, that really pops. And you can even see a bit of his heart, which calls back to a lot of his previous suits. Then he has the same legs that the rest of the 10th anniversary Golden Ninja have. And then each Golden Ninja was based on a different previous suit, and as you can see, Zane right here is based off the FS suit. Now I like that idea and concept, because of course Zane was a main character of that season. But but in execution, I really don't think this looks good, because this is meant to be trans blue elemental power, just like we saw in the previous suits, but the trans blue on top of the gold just really doesn't mesh well, so it kind of turns into this murky green, and that's just not what the element of ice is supposed to look like. I think they honestly would have been better doing like a solid white instead, because yeah, if the color blue looked like this, I think this would be fantastic, but on top of the gold it just looks ugly. There's a full look of the Zane figure with the hooded armor removed. 
And there's a look at the back torso print too, which honestly I also think is really good. That white belt still really pops, and you can see you've got Zane Z symbol right here. And it's sort of like etched into his back and meant to look like ice shards. All things considered, we got a really unique lineup of Legacy Zane minifigures in 2021. Also in 2021, we had Ninjago Season 14, The Island and Seabound. And across those two waves, we had two separate Zane figures, Island Zane and Scuba Zane. Island Zane is way better than he has any right being. This is another figure that's probably one of my favorite Zane suits ever. And it's one that I forget about a lot, but this truly is spectacular. This is another one of the suits where he's got like a lot of his chest showing and you can even see his heart. But they like really refine them in Helix Silver printing here. It looks so gorgeous. But what I really love is the different shades of blue that they use. They use like this lighter blue up here in the torso, then a slightly darker blue for his belt, and then there's even a little bit of metallic blue that continues down into his legs. Turning around to the back, he once again has a quiver just like he had on his movie suits. And on the back torso print, you can see there's some of his back showing again with that metallic silver, he's even got like some scratch marks on him, and it seems like this is almost meant to be blue camouflage. Yeah, this one's actually incredible. But then Scuba Zane I also like. The scuba suits are pretty interesting because they're not really ninja suits, they're scuba diving outfits. So it does have a lot of the same aesthetic choices that Island Zane has, though I don't think it's nearly as good of a figure. Still though, he brings over that same color belt, and I do like how mechanical they made the top of his torso look. All the scuba ninja have a little bit of yellow on them, and I think it works fine on Zane, not like incredibly, but it doesn't feel too out of place. And then of course he's got the giant air tanks at the back, which if we remove them, there's how that looks. This look at the back torso print too, and I actually think this maybe even looks a little bit better than the front. It seems like there's maybe ice energy stored in that tank back there, and it's coming around to the front in these little pipes. And yeah, you can see those continue down into the belt. So two fairly good figures overall. Island Zane has to be one of my favorites, and Scuba Zane is good for what he wants to be, but nothing spectacular in my opinion. And then coming to 2022, in the first half of the year, they of course introduced Ninjago Core, and we only got one Zane minifigure with that wave, Core Zane. But I have to say, unlike the Legacy suits, I like this suit a lot more. Despite being like a default or common version of the ninja, this one I think is actually a really good one to get. For one, they swapped that gray on the Legacy hood for blue, and I think this looks significantly better. It just pops so much more, and I feel like it better represents the element of ice. You can see that once again, Zane has a bit of his chest showing, and he's also sleeveless. And I think the whole ice shard design is very simplistic, but also quite elegant, and it fits Zane's overall vibe. He uses this light yellow on his belt as well as on his knee pads, and when I first saw this figure, I was like, huh, that's a bit odd, that's a little out of place. But then I realized that's the same exact color that he used on his original ZX suit, and after 10 years, they finally reintroduced it on another figure, and it's really cool to see that called back to. Now I don't know if yellow necessarily fits the element of ice, that part is a bit weird, but I don't know, at least personally, I feel like it kind of works. He of course still uses the Season 11 armor out the back, and on the back of his torso there's ice shards converge in like a triangle point, and he's got the word ninja written in ninjargon, and that's something that all of the core ninja have on the backs of their torsos. And for a generic Zane that's going to be common on shelves for the next few years, I'm very happy that it's this suit, because it's not a bad one by any means. And then also in 2022, we of course had Ninjago crystallized, and there was a total of three Zane minifigures for that wave, so here are the first two. We just have the standard crystallized Zane, and then the golden crystallized Zane. I'm not sure if there's an actual name for this suit. But anyway, the standard suit I actually think is fantastic. They actually reincorporated the gray here, which I mentioned before I'm not the biggest fan of, but I think on the arms and the torso it actually looks really nice. But I like how they kept the blue on the hood like the core suit had. He's also got a bit of dark tan here, which is a color that he's not really used before, but I feel like it actually fits him, probably better than the tan does. That tan still is here though now on the undershirt. For just like a standard ninja suit, I think this is actually really good. If this was the core suit instead of the one we got, I definitely wouldn't be complaining. Now it is just kind of a generic ninja suit, so there's nothing that really pops about this one for me, and I don't think it's nearly as good as like SOG, but I feel like it combines all of Zane's colors well, and it's just really good for a standard ninja suit. Now Golden Zane is cool, I don't think I like him as much, just because he does have a lot going on. All the metallic gold armor is quite pretty, and you can see a bit of Zane's chest peeking through. I do feel like the blue belt on top of the gold might be a little bit much, it reminds me a little bit of his Master of the Mountain suit, but overall I definitely feel like this figure does that color scheme better than the Master of the Mountain suit did. Everything's just integrated together a lot better. And I like the secondary color of orange to be like streaks on top of the gold. It helps those armor pieces like really pop and feel detailed while also still like obviously being golden. So yeah, good figure. Another one that's not my favorite, but still really solid. And then of course the final Zane figure a part of the Ninjago Crystallized Wave was Golden Dragon Zane. And I mean, what is there to say about this figure? You heard me mention earlier in this video, whenever they try to do like a powered up version of Zane, none of them are as good as the original energy. And while I still think the original energy might be the best, I could see maybe liking this one more. And even if not, it's certainly a close second. They like perfectly capture the element of ice here. The transparent arms are so cool. Same thing with the transparent legs. And I love how smooth of a transition it is too from the torso into the legs. It truly feels like this figure is meant to be made of ice. The like aqua color for the hands is very pretty too. And we haven't even talked about the giant wings on the back yet, which look gorgeous. They're able to be individually articulated. And once again, they look like they're made of ice. This like dragon face mask combines the gold and the trans blue absolutely perfectly. This is how I wanted the 10th anniversary Golden Zane's mask to look. 
and I'm glad they got it right here. And then, like, even the golden armor in the torso is pretty as well. I think it's easily the worst part of this figure, because I think the icy parts look the best, but it's certainly not bad. Again, it uses that orange as a secondary color, and it's got Zane's symbol in the center. And even with the wing attachment removed, the figure looks incredible. You can see, of course, there's an all-new face print here, which is also translate blue, but still got Zane's standard face on it, and those ice shards bursting out around it. And there is no alternate face here, but of course, there's not gonna be, because it would show through the front of the head. Back torso print's amazing, too. Nothing like the front at all, but it almost looks like the back of the torso is like a giant ice platform, and Zane's symbol's like carved into it in these cracks. This is one of my favorite LEGO figures of all time, just in general. They went all out with this one, and I couldn't be happier with it. And then finally, coming to 2023, here are the last two Zane minifigures that have been released, at least as of now. We of course have Dragon's Rising Zane here on the left, and then Detective Zane here on the right, who's from Ninjago Prime Empire, but he came out in a Dragon's Rising set, so I don't know which one to consider him, but I just want to review him here with the 2023 minifigures. Zane's standard Dragon's Rising suit, though, I have to say, looks really good. The new Dragon's Rising armor pieces are definitely a lot bulkier than previous suits, so I'm not sure how everybody feels about them. Personally, I don't mind them as like a one-off suit. Now, if this is going to be every ninja suit going forward, I might not like them as much. But for our first time getting them, I think they look all right. But you can see the color scheme here is kind of similar to the crystallized Zane, where they use both that gray and that blue, and I think they mesh together really well. I think the incorporation of gold here is actually incredibly well done. As you saw with gold and crystallized Zane, I feel like gold is sometimes very tricky to get right, especially with the blue and the white. But I think this one does it right, where it's there a little bit, like on the ends of the belt and on the symbol right here. But it's not like too overbearing anywhere. The blue is also a lot more prominent in this suit, more prominent than it's ever been. That helps it stand out and it looks incredible. I think that was definitely the right choice. This new armor piece, of course, also has a new double sword holder at the back. And there's a look at the new back torso print on Zane where he's got this dragon symbol that all the ninja have for Dragon's Rising. I do like the ice shard surrounding it though. Again, just like many other suits, it captures his element well. And then Zane has two all new face prints here. One is like these digital eyes on it and the eyes are sort of shaped like his eyebrows, which is a fun touch. But then he also has like these teal ice shards surrounding it. And then on the alternate side, he just has an all new neutral face which that's a very good one to get. It's kind of reminiscent of his original 2011 face. This one seems maybe a little bit angrier than that face, but it's pretty darn close. So it's cool to see that kind of called back to here. This guy's a very good figure. I'm quite happy with him. And then finally, Detective Zane is another super cool variant. I mean, how could you not love this guy? He's entirely grayscale, which is so unique for a Lego minifigure. That's something we don't get all too often. But you can see his detective's jacket has his ninja suit peeking out from underneath, even if it is just a fairly standard jacket design. Now these legs aren't printed, but I think that's perfectly fine for a figure like this. He definitely doesn't need printed legs. And the solid gray hat's of course, a fun touch too. However, the absolute best part about this figure is the all-new face print because, of course, Zane has an all-new smiling face here. And this figure was redesigned back in 2018, so it's been five years since the first, like, titanium Zane face in the new style was introduced. And we kind of got a smiling face with the FS suit, but that was a double-sided face, so you couldn't use it with hair too well. But this expression works perfectly for Detective Zane, but also just works as a happy face for any Zane. So while this entire figure is incredible, that's easily the best part. I'm very, very happy to get that here. So yeah, even though there was only two new figures, I think 2023 has been a great year for Zane figues, and I hope that continues into 2024. But there you go, there is every single LEGO Ninjago Zane minifigure from 2011 to 2023. Let me know in the comments which of these figures is your favorite and which one is your least favorite. It's hard for me to pick, as Zane's my favorite ninja and I love so many of these as you heard in this video. I'd say my favorites are probably Zane ZX, Skybound Zane, SOG Zane, Golden Dragon Zane, and then maybe even Island Zane, and probably NRG Zane too. I know that's a lot, so it's hard to say favorites, but it's hard to pick. So many of them are so good. Least favorite is obviously Spinjitzu Master Zane, but after that would probably be Master of the Mountain Zane. I don't even hate that figure, but I I feel like it's just not that good. And especially compared to all the others we looked at in this video, I don't think there are any that are worse than that. I guess Bajitsu Slam Zane's not the best, but at the very least he does have a new face print. And same thing with our Jitsu Zane, right? Like I don't like him as much as some of the other powered up suits, but that face print is incredible and the figure itself's not bad. It's just those other figures that do the same exact idea much better. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, make sure to leave a like if you want to see more every Ninja minifigure videos and let me know in the comments which ninja you want to see a video on next. But as for this video, I think that's about all I have to say. So thanks for watching everybody. I hope you all enjoyed and I will see you in the next one. Bye.